It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Indianapolis Colts. And it's coming up next. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Today we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Brandon Gunn joined here in Indianapolis by Charles Davis. Well, CD, these Colts, they seem to be onto something a few years back. They had the NFL's leading rusher and Jonathan Taylor. But last year, a big fall, down to 4-12-1. And, and they want to get back to what they had a few seasons ago, as you alluded to. Can they get Jonathan Taylor going again on the ground, get their offensive line going? And their defense certainly has to play a whole lot better than it did in 2022. But meanwhile, the visiting Steelers come into 2023 with something to prove. They finished above 500 at 9-8 and eight last year, but wound up on the outside looking in in terms of the playoff race. And you and I both know how it is around Pittsburgh. Death taxes and the Steelers finish 500 or above. But they want to get beyond that. They want to get back to those days when the Steelers were playing deep into the playoffs for the chance to go to the Super Bowl. And they feel like this team is continuing to get better. And the punter Rigoberto Sanchez ready to go. And we are underway from Lucas Oil Stadium. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level, and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. Pickett. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Warren. Call it a gain of three on the play. And now two yards to go on third down. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Uh, didn't get it by much, but bottom line, got the first down. Avoiding that three and out, how vital is that on the first drive? To me, it's like the first round of a boxing match. You know, it may not mean much right then and there, but you'd rather not lose it, right? So you want to go ahead and get it, kind of establish something early, and hope it can carry through. Now a pass hauled in downfield. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds but not before he takes it inside the 40. He got 29 yards that time. It's a nice zone breaker right there. Take the tight end, move him out to the slot, then have him run a corner route versus the zone coverage, which means he's going to be behind the, the, the shallow coverage and ahead of the deep coverage, put the ball right on him. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Quitty Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. Chalked that one up to bad acting, I guess, because they certainly failed to sell the handoff, and the pressure stayed keyed in on the quarterback. No Oscar awards for this offense, just a loss of yardage. So after the sack, here's second and 14. Pickett, he'll look to throw it. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. A gain there of 21 yards. 
they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4-4 four four on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease, feels good about what he's doing. I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that and continuing to let him throw the football. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down first and 10. And a good sign for them right now to have their young quarterback looking confident on the opening drive. Now, we haven't met a young quarterback, a veteran quarterback. It doesn't matter. We haven't met a quarterback yet that doesn't tell us he's confident about his abilities, right? That's true. But when you're young, it's really important to get off to a good start because it does build up that confidence. It allows him to play better as the game goes on. Especially crucial here on the road. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. But it'll be second down. Harris running straight ahead. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Najee Harris taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Steelers will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone. I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground, and he'll take it all the way into the end zone. Extra point put through by Boswell, and it's now a 7-0 game. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. The Colts offense set to go to work, and they're led by a guy who's bounced around a bit the last few years, hoping to find a home with Indianapolis. Gardner Minshew. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love. And that's caught inside the 30. A big play there for Andy. 41 yards. Usually in this spot, you can hear an offensive coordinator saying, don't feel like you've got to get this all back at once. But here, they give up the opening touchdown and say, no time like the present to show what we can do, too. And that's big yardage on their initial play from scrimmage. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And this taken in by Downs. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Minshew sets to throw. Throw taken in by Taylor, left side. Touchdown, Colts! Jonathan Taylor, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts are able to strike back quickly with an opening touchdown of their own. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And we are tied at seven.
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Room to run at the 50. Still going inside the 30. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Call that a 96-yard house call on the kick return. And the Steelers have taken the lead. Such an electric play, so much fun to watch, and you need all 11 guys in sync for that to be successful, don't you? Without a doubt. That's, that's teamwork, to be able to put it all together, but that play is really probably the most exciting 10 seconds in football. Extra point now by Boswell. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. And we will not see an attempt to match that return touchdown as this will be a touchback and bring it out to the 25. They'll go play action here with Minshew. And he's got Pierce. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive, it comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. Finds his big tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 29-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it. We can always lock in on the skill position, guys. Put those big fellas up front. They're really making this offense go early in the game. That's complete to Pierce. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes it, the fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, looked like the offensive line let them down a little bit. They allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff them for a loss. Pass taken in by his big tight end, and he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Now a first and 10 at the 11. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. 
So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Minshew. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Well, one of the linebackers has got it. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. And a defensive-minded coach loves to turn up the heat, turns it up there, and pays off. And back in the good old days, those defensive-minded coaches just talked about intimidating teams, using force, right, beating them to the punch. In this case, they're talking about creating turnovers. That's all they preach, all game long, all practice long, every meeting. Get the football. That's what they want. A run there on first down and a pretty good one at five yards, so make it second and five. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. Here's Pickett on second down. That's caught. Allen Robinson. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. Pick it'll look to throw it here. Complete, it's Johnson. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up second down. Pick it back to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Warren. And down he goes at the 49, a three yard pickup. Another pass here. Pick it. A short one there to Fryermuth. And he is going to lose yardage here. This will wind up a loss on the play. And that will bring up fourth down. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game. Scouting, watching Phil, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Now on fourth down, Presley Harvin on to punt for the Steelers. Back deep for the Colts, Isaiah McKenzie. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. Well, pretty woeful there, just 23 yards on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll start with a give to Taylor. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now Minshew. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick, and they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. Before we came up to the booth, last thing he said as we were walking off the field, want to play mistake-free football. Well, that just went out the window there with a pick. And do you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that? You're like, oh, fatal last words every time we hear that. Things tend to fall apart a little bit, and that's what we saw there. Didn't get enough on that throw, and it turned into an interception. Now a first down carry for Harris. Julian Blackman bringing him down. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Here's second and five now from the 37. 
Back to throw, pick it. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Now Pickett. Finds Pickens out right. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Looking to throw, pick it. A short one there to Fryermuth. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two. As they've got it with a second down and two coming up. Here's Pickett. And his throw is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. On the give, this is Harris. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. Boswell's kick is good, and they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. Well, they already had the early lead, and they get the interception, Charles, and now they add three more with the field goal. Yeah, they're in control of how this game is playing out so far. You mentioned the early lead. Now they're expanding on it, getting plays on both sides of the ball. A winning recipe if they can keep this up. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. <laughs> All right, guys, you had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Just need a yard here, second and one. Minshew gonna keep it. Oh, he's hit, he lost the football, put it on the carpet. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his guys are gonna take over at the 34-yard line. Hey, I'm all about defense forcing plays and, and, and getting takeaways. But an interception and two fumbles in their last three offensive possessions. Time to readjust? <laughs> yeah, they, you, you can't just give all the credit to the defense on that. They've got to look in the mirror and take a blame themselves and figure out how to not do it anymore. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They hand this off to Harris. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Ball at the 33, second and nine. Operating from the gun, pick it. And his throw here is incomplete. 
We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So they've been unable to capitalize on the great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. Back to throw. Pick it. That's complete to his tight end fire move. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32 and obviously well short of the first down. So the completion gets him just a yard, and that's going to make it fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. Boswell's kick is good, and that will open the lead up now to 20 to 7. So they get the turnover in plus territory. The drive stalls out, but still able to get three out of that. Yeah, we were able to see an offense and a defense kind of mix and match with each other, didn't we? Both of them trying to make sure that they had the upper hand and the advantage. Offense trying to get to the end zone. Defense, of course, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. And it wasn't a guaranteed lock three from where they started. So, you know, the offense has to be happy to come away with those three points. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. From his end zone, Isaiah McKenzie. They had only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. I had one tell me once, you know, when we were having a tough patch, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. And if I, we kept having a rough patch, he said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Let's one go downfield for Pierce. That's gonna be knocked away and incomplete. Well, they have that one snipped out defensively. That's a tough one to connect on when you've got multiple defenders in the area and it winds up incomplete. On fourth down, the Colts will call on Rigoberto Sanchez for the punt. The back deep for the Steelers is Calvin Austin. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pick it to throw on first down. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Pick it. Throw left side, hauled in by Pickens. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Now run straight ahead with Warren. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football.
Pick it now to throw off the play fake. That swung out wide to Harris. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll make it second down. Now a toss play, it's Harris. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. He's taken down at the... The offense on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and two. They stay on the ground, again it's Harris. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Pick it. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he's brought down after a very nice game. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Harris, and he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Definitely an important sequence here for this defense. They've had their share of struggles in this first half. They just cannot afford to give up another touchdown here. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Open man is Johnson. Touchdown Steelers. Two yards on the touchdown there as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Boswell good with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to an even 20. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 24. There's a throw to his running back. It's complete. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. And Pittman going to have a Colts first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 30. Seven.
Minshew sets to throw. And going right back to Pittman. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Here's second and three. Out of the gun is Minshew. He's got the tight end, Mo Alley Cox. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. That is caught, Michael Pittman with it. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Another good reception there, the Colts on the march. He's one of the bigger receivers in the game, CD, and his size that time certainly helped against double coverage. Yeah, you're still a little bit of a disadvantage when you're going against multiple defenders when they're trying to double you and sometimes triple you. But you're exactly right with his build. He could minimize that disadvantage, and he more than held his own and hauled that one in right there. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him back-to-back -back catches now. That one for 16, and another first down. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. It'll be Minshew again. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Here's Minshew. This is caught. And the Colts are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Got a man, it's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts' touchdown. A one-yard touchdown pass, and the Colts are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. An out route there for the score, a quick out route there for the score. Yeah, you're not really surveying the defense on this one. You're just counting on timing, making this play happen. One, two, balls out of his hands, knows where he's going, just puts it to the outside. Touchdown. Extra point by Gain is up and good. And that cuts this lead down to 13. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Taking it at about the one. And there he goes again. Still going past the 30. And he finally runs out of gas, but not before he's inside the 10-yard line. Similar to golf, you never want to count a score before it actually happens, but you have to figure. They thought they were going to get six on that play. Great effort to keep them out of the end zone, but a big-time return. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Looking to throw. Pick it. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. 
And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Back to throw. Pick it toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodge two pass attempts to the end zone. Now, what do you think they're trying to dial up on third goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've got to run out of your running plays, fire another one into the end zone. Now, pick it. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. How about the defensive stand here from first and goal, three straight incompletion. Yeah, I think people are wondering why didn't they try and run it at least once in there. But once the first incompletion happened, it's almost like they were committed to throwing the ball from then on out. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half. Well, not much time remains here in this first half. We'll see if they can get something out of this drive, at least a field goal. They could certainly use it down by two scores. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Let's one go downfield for Pierce. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Yeah, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. Now a timeout called for by the defense as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. First and 10, here's Pickett. Throws to his man on the out route. It's complete. That's Robinson. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. 
Now here's another carry for Harris. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. Isaiah McKenzie now on the return. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. Well, the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively, CD, down two scores here. So how do they make some changes coming out of the locker room. Well, they've studied what they did in the first half. They've seen what the defense is throwing at them. Now they want to have a plan of attack against it. So you come out, you're not going to get all the points back on one drive, but get started on it. Start chopping into that lead, and maybe it'll inspire your defense to help out as well. First and 10, Taylor now. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. On second down, Minshew. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, Minshew to throw. I uh, had a man but he missed him and it's incomplete so coming up empty here to start the third quarter already two scores down got to be careful yeah i didn't notice though that the captain of the defense patted the quarterback on the helmet on his way out pretty much letting him know we know the pressure's on us we're gonna go out there and try and hold serve for you while you figure it out over here on the sidelines as Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. To the air on first down with Pickett. A short one there to Fryermuth. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius, understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball, and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Pick it. Throw left side is intercepted. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. So a nice play defensively by the rookie coming up with the INT. And that's a late round pick right there, making a first round impact. And a lot of these day three corners end up winding up on special teams and sub packages and even on the practice squad. 
but he's really made an impact on this defense, and he comes up with the interception there. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They'll start following the interception in great field position at the 45. Now Minshew on first and 10. Out to the right and complete to Pittman. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. On second down, here's the option. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think his big boys up front, that offensive line, they've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Only 29 yards on the punt there. Definitely not his best. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 20-yard line. Harris will start the drive out. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit because... In football nowadays, tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. Pick it now on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I've got a good friend in football always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Pickett now from the gun here. Got an open man, it's Pickens. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Just a yard on the pick up there. And it'll bring up a second and nine. Here's Pickett, setting up the screen, Harris. And he's taken down inside the 30. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. On first and 10, it's Pickett. Pickens on the slant. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. First down, Pittsburgh. Looking to throw, Pickett. 
zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Allen Robinson, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers are able to extend their lead. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So take away the touchdown there as that's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. And that could have been the lifeline they needed. This is a play that could have been made. Instead, it's just going to fall incomplete. That's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine. And they need 10 yards out of it on third. Dialing up another pass here. Pick it. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. So Pickett is off to the sideline, and Chris Boswell is on for the Steeler field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. And right now, Charles, this is about building that lead little by little, and they're able to do just that. And it gets them past the key number of 16, so this is now a three-score lead. Not time to exhale just yet, but that might prove to be an important three points before things are said and done. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. The Colts set to take over here offensively. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Connecting here with Pittman on the out route. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. Right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now Minshew. And his throw's going to be incomplete. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Minshew sets to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. The 
it's always a goal and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on for the fifth time here today. Yeah, yikes. Terrible kick headed straight for the sideline. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal added onto their lead, but that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game, but we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. But and we wasn't. know that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. Second down and eight. They'll motion the tight end across the formation. Again, it's Harris on second down. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Third down and six. Now pick it. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he didn't quite have the bag spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Well, this has been a tough one for them, Charles. They've struggled really on both sides of the football. And one thing that's really plagued them, the turnovers. They've had issues keeping the football in their possession. And every game that's ever been played, <laughs> all coaches talk about taking care of the football and limiting turnovers. And in this one, after we saw that first turnover, we worried that things would snowball, and it certainly did, especially on the scoreboard. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. They give to Taylor out of the gun, and this winds up a gain of four to the 41. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Second down, another run with Taylor. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Out of the gun is Minshew. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Now back to throw. He's got a man that's caught left sideline. And all the way to the two yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. The end result, 21 yards. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're gonna be set up with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Taylor is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage as they'll tackle him at the three. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. 
Again, it'll be Taylor. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Got to figure this is one they need here on third and goal. Escaping the prank. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Gardner Minshew taking it in from four yards out. And the Colts are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. They had that first half lead, but they have been shut down here in this third quarter, so time to retool a bit. And probably need to tap into that emotional vein that gets them back to really playing hard and effectively. Because a lot of times we think it's just play calls and this isn't working and they're shutting them down. Sometimes when you get a lead, you lose your edge. You don't play quite as hard. That's what they're looking for here. Trying to get that edge back as they've watched this lead shrink a little. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. Now second and five. It's Steeler football, and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Harris going to get it again on second down. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. From the 48-yard line, here's second down at a yard. Going to run the toss here to Harris. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. On the give, it's Warren. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? On second down, this is Harris. 
trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight reel. It's not going to make the highlight reel, but it will be the focus of the film session that the team has to sit through. I've sat through those before. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays, and they actually fast forward through those. All right, that was good. All right, great. They get to the bad ones and really illuminate them. Not cool. 18 yards the gain for number 18. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Harris running straight ahead. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. But when you're up by two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me that option of running play action and maybe throwing it. So an incomplete pass a moment ago, and that leads to second and goal. They'll try to run with Harris, and he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Steelers have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. And how nice is it to have a guy like Najee Harris in the backfield when you get down near the goal line? He can use his 230-plus pound frame to just get you those tough yards, and he finishes things off here with a touchdown run. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that will make this a 19-point game. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. McKenzie will not return this and it will be brought out to the 25. Indy set to go on offense once more. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers you would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Minshew's throw going to be caught by McKenzie. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. Back to throw here. That one finds Pierce right side. 
And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, so far, little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to them, and it's paying off. It'll be Minshew again. And he's got Pierce. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. A very solid gain of 27. First and goal at the 7-yard line. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run here with Taylor. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard that time, second and goal. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Again, it's Taylor. And he's gonna press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has it? And this time he is in. Yes. Jonathan Taylor with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And the thing you have to love about Jonathan Taylor, he's a shifty speed guy most of the time when you hand him the football, but he's not coming off the field when you get down near the goal line because he's as tough and gritty as they come. And he finishes things off here by getting into the end zone. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And they're able to cut this deficit down to 12. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the Steelers getting set and ready for their next possession. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense, but yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. And the Colts are right back in this football game. Boy, that one was in the air for an agonizingly long time. Uh, just begging to be picked off, wasn't it? It's one thing if you're throwing a ball like that, trying to throw someone open or lead them into an area. But that ball needed to be thrown with a lot more conviction. As a result, it's an easy interception. In the offense, ready to go once again, and we'll get another look at Alec Pierce. He's north of 150 yards in this game. He's been doing his thing, hasn't he? That he has, and he's been enjoying himself, and it's the type of game that you get locked into a pretty good groove. May not be record-shattering, 
but it's the type of game that if you accumulate that throughout a season, you're going to be one of the top receivers in the game. See how much they incorporate him here on this drive. A gain of eight there on the play, and they'll be left with second and a couple. A good start there on this fourth quarter drive. They need more of what we just saw. Down a couple of scores. There's still time, all right? It's not like, you know, they're totally out of it, but they have to score quickly, and they're going to need some big-time plays, chunk plays, explosive plays. They need yardage on each snap. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Charles, he's now over 400 yards passing in this one. It feels like he has a zillion completions. Just a very memorable effort from a guy that we thought could be in line for a big game, and he has exceeded our expectations. That he has, and I touchdown! Alec Pierce, 26 yards! And the Colts have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Great corner route there, not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field, and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Gay is on for the point after. And this is back to a five-point game. So that drive with four plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown catch from Alec Pierce. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. I'm curious to see, Charles, about the play calling on this drive. Last time out, the interception that led to a touchdown. Here we are, I mean, very close, one score game. Yeah, and if I'm a defender, I'm actually chirping to the on the other side of the ball, said, hey, we picked off the last one. What you going to do about it now? <laughs> so when you do throw the football, high percentage, but throw it with confidence. If there's any hesitancy at all, it could end up in enemy's hands again. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. And I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here. Second and 11. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They hand this off to Harris, and he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage.
Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. On the give, this is Harris. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Here's Harris. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised him a little bit running the ball. Yet they rallied to it and stopped him well short of a first down. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So Minshew and the Colts now. Down by five. A minute eight to go. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and ten. Now Minshew. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. But just over a minute to go in the football game. Second and ten. Minshew. Finding Pittman. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understanding where they are on the field. Final minute. No timeouts at their disposal. Here's first and ten. Here's Minshew. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple of plays in a huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Just over 50 seconds remain. Here's second and ten. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they've got to go and get it right here, right now. This definitely four-down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And that's the downside of taking these big shots because they're definitely lower percentage plays. And now you look up, and it's fourth down. So not only do you have to worry about getting big yardage, you also need to just keep the game alive. On fourth down, Minshew. He's going to let it fly. Knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Steelers, they're going to take over an excellent field position. No surprise. They try to throw the ball on fourth down, but it gets batted down. They don't pick it up. Well, a little football 101. When you're going toward that quarterback, you see he's going to start to throw. Get your hands up, Get right? your hands up, affect the play, and then everyone, get your hands up. When the ball gets to the receiver, moment of truth, knock it away. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. 